So thank you. Um, I'm Brian Walters, happy to be here with you. I'm Percona's Director of Solution Engineering, and I'm presenting today with my co-presenter, uh, Travis. Uh, Travis, I'm gonna murder your last name, Futas. Close, that is close. I'm Travis Butis. I am the Senior Compliance <laughs> Manager and the in-house attorney for Percona. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, compliance is a topic that is top of the priority list for many organizations today. And uh, PCI compliance is one of the more frequently discussed forms of the compliance. So that coupled with the fact that we get this question, you know, from time to time asking us whether an opera comes server for MongoDB is uh, PCI compliant were the catalyst for us deciding to do this talk. So what we're going to do today is discuss PCI compliance, um, the exciting topic that it is. We'll learn about what it means, what it means to achieve it, and then we'll show you how to enable some specific configurable features inside of Percona Server for MongoDB uh, and set them to minimum baselines. Now, I'm going to warn everybody today, uh, as you know, from my background as a solution engineer, please do not try to do anything that you see us demonstrate today. And uh, while that might sound funny, um, the reason for it is because we're going to show you the minimum configuration options. Uh, if you want to achieve PCI compliance in your environment, then you're going to want to put a lot more thought and planning into your configurations, and you are not going to want to just choose the base minimum uh, viable configuration options. Uh, you know, I'll also just throw out there that this type of thought and planning is something that Percona does all the time, and we're happy to help walk you through it. We're happy to help facilitate those types of decisions uh, with you uh, as we move forward. So with that, um, Travis, why don't you kick us off? Absolutely. As, uh, as Brian said, you know, we decided to conduct this talk because Procona customers and product users are frequently asking us about our PCI compliance, both within Procona server for MongoDB uh, and within our services in general. And I am the fortunate one who gets to answer those questions. So we thought maybe we'd get ahead of this and start providing some of this information uh, in the form of more public demonstrations and more public documentation. Uh, so this is our first start. Uh, so, Unfortunately, PCI DSS compliance is a loaded question. Um, it's something that we could talk about for three or four hours from the legal perspective, uh, even longer from the technical perspective. But I think between Brian and I, we have about 12 minutes to discuss. So we're going to just plow on through this as quickly as we can. To Brian's point, a little disclaimer from my background. We, uh, I am a, an attorney and although Percona has trusted me to give them legal advice, uh, no one on this call should take this as legal advice. Uh, if you have any questions about PCI compliance, make sure you conduct your own due diligence. Uh, ask your own attorneys for advice. Uh, do not simply rely on what we're telling you. Again, we are just showing you the minimum standards for Percona Server for MongoDB, and I'm just giving a very high level overview of PCI compliance. So to that point though, let's get to the fun stuff and kick off. Um, so PCI, payment card industry. There are two standards that we're concerned about when it comes to software uh, and, and the database environment within PCI standards. The first one is what's called the data security standards or DSS as we'll refer to it. These are broader, uh, more organizational requirements that apply to really all of your cardholder data environments and anything that touches or interacts with that cardholder environment. Um, we then have software security framework, uh, and we'll get both into both of these more specifically. But we have software security framework, which is the specific security controls for payment software, which is any software that's been designed for the purpose of processing transactions uh, with payment information. So PCI DSS, again, these are the data security standards. PCI DSS is an information security standard similar to others like uh, ISO 27001, SOC 2. Uh, this includes organizational, administrative, technical controls, uh, applies really to your organization as a whole. Um, more specifically though, it provides a baseline of technical and operational requirements to protect cardholder or account data that you may have in your possession whether you know the actual retention of it in a database or software or the interaction of it uh, even includes you know hr functions so really this broader um, broader baselines that apply to all companies that store process transmit 
cardholder data or are otherwise involved in that um, process, which includes, you know, merchants, processors, acquirers, issues, service providers, as defined by PCI, which really means that PCI data security standard applies to anyone or anything that touches cardholder data. And more importantly, though, is what does it cover? Like, what, what does this actually apply to within your company? And again, anything used to interact with or manage cardholder data, which for our purposes today, most importantly, your database environment, but from a broader scale, uh, it includes uh, people, processes, and technologies involved in managing cardholder data. So system components, that can be anything like a network device, a server, you know, a router, a switch, uh, it can be the applications that are used to interact with uh, your cardholder data in your environment. Uh, it includes, we said, HR functions. So anything that you know, it goes into, you know, how you manage your people, uh, how people interact with the environments that you have and the applications that you run. Um, also, although not specified in PCI guidance, one of the key features or one of the key um, fundamentals is that this also applies to your cloud hosting environment. And many people forget that. It's not just the application. It's not just your organizational controls. It's the infrastructure and more importantly, the cloud infrastructure that you're using. Um, for instance, like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, all of these indicate that they're PCI DSS compliant. They'll provide certificates. Uh, fundamental, fundamental concern, making sure that that's included in the scope of these components. So a little bit more granular on the software security framework. So this is a set of security requirements and development procedures that ensure payment software adequately protects that transaction data and the cardholder data during the process of processing a transaction. Uh, sorry, that was a lot of process and processing, but that is what it is. It's any process during the processing of transaction data um, must comply with the software security framework. And uh, again, the purpose of these is make sure that payment transactions and data uh, are protected, vulnerabilities within the software minimized, and that the software has the ability to defend itself from external attacks. Uh, something good to note here is the software security framework is relatively new. It was implemented in 2019, and it is taking the place of a different software uh, security rules that PCI had previously set out. Uh, this will be fully implemented in 2022. As of right now, this does not apply to standalone databases. Um, in the future, it may, so this is something to keep in mind that although this may not specifically to apply to a database, as of right now, these rules are still being written, still being amended, so stay tuned for that. Now, why should I care? Why do I care about DSS and SSF or whatever this may be? Uh, again, we talked through quickly, I, the, uh, PCI DSS applies to potentially everyone and everything that has data. PCI SSF applies to a limited subset of individuals. Um, so the question to ask is, specific to Percona Server for MongoDB, is how are you using Percona Server for MongoDB? Is it used as part of your cardholder data environment? Is it used as part of your payment application? Are you considering doing that? Is it used as both? Is it used as neither, but yet it's still used as some sort of function? Uh, that interacts with your cardholder data. And then we'll dig, then we can dig into these. So if you are using uh, PSMDB as part of your cardholder data environment, um, right? Remember that data security standards applies to the entire computing environment and to attain PCI DSS compliance, whether you're doing that through a self attestation or an external audit. All underlying system components and applications that touch the cardholder environment are included in the scope of audit, which means that if you're using Percona Server for MongoDB as part of your cardholder data environment, then Percona Server for MongoDB is going to be audited and the way that you have set up and configured Percona Server for MongoDB and how you interact with it will be part of that audit. Now, um, with the software security framework, maybe you're only considering using Percona Server for MongoDB as part of the payment application. So it'll be one of your database or your key database environment. Then all that you're focusing on right now is that software security framework. Um, now, keep in mind though, that even if you're only focused on that software security framework, because all you're doing is using Percona Server 
for MongoDB as part of that payment application, payment software. Um, you yourself are not PCI compliant uh, because in order to have full PCI DSS compliance, which is the security standards, um, a secure application, something that has obtained the security software framework still has to be implemented within a PCI DSS compliant um, environment. So easy way to remember it is PCI DSS means that just about everything that you've obtained or everything within your cardholder environment has obtained PCI compliance in some way, shape or form. SSF is specific to that software. So, uh, and just kind of an example from Percona. So Percona is a service provider to merchants. We have many financial customers and they consider us a service provider as it's defined by PCI. So our services themselves have to comply with several portions of PCI DSS that are relevant uh, to the services we provide. So what we do on an annual basis is Percona completes and submits what's called an SAQD. So it's a self-attestation form. Uh, it's about 99 pages. It goes through all of our specific controls, uh, how they relate to our interaction with cardholder data environment. Um, and then we use that to attest to our PCI DSS compliance along with some of the other compliance certifications that we have, which is the HIPAA security rule and ISO 27001. Uh, on the software side, uh, software is a little different because Percona does not develop payment applications. Our software is not validated against uh, these secure software standards. Um, again, databases by themselves standalone are not required to go through this uh, security framework validation process, but that doesn't mean we don't take these into account when we develop software. Um, for instance, we know that software may be used as part of a payment application and we'll need to support specific user authentication protocols, encryption, audit logging, all of which we'll talk about. So we ensure that those are built into our software. Uh, so with the standards, so you can kind of see the breakdown of standards here. So on the left, we have the data security standards. On the right, we have the software security standards. Uh, no surprise that there's 12 standards for each, uh, plus an appendix for the software. Um, these are your high level uh, requirements, controls, and then there are sub requirements within each one of them that we can go through. During an audit or an attestation um, on the data security side, you'll answer yes, yes with a compensating control worksheet, no or NA. So you'll answer one of four ways when you're going through and identifying whether or not something applies or whether or not you have a control in place. Um, similarly with the software side, you'll answer with, yep, this is in place, this is not in place, or this is not applicable. Really what you wanna to get to with all of these, which is why it's so important to really understand what the requirements are, is you wanna be able to answer within your audits that yes, yes, something is in place, yes, there is a control, Yes, we have it and tested and validated. As unfortunately, anything other than an, a yes requires an explanation to your auditor, requires further testing, and you know potentially can prevent you from being able to attest to PCI compliance. So really, you need to structure your controls both within the software and the cardholder environment uh, from the get-go with this in mind, knowing that, hey, there are so many controls and we are going to need to um, specifically identify that they don't apply with a strong reason as to why, or that yes, they apply, and yes, we have them in place. Uh, so let's apply a couple of these just on a broader level to Percona Server for MongoDB. So for instance, on the data security side, like what can we do within Percona Server for MongoDB to ensure compliance with data security standards? Uh, for instance, you see requirement number two. Do not use vendor supplied defaults for system passwords and other security parameters. Uh, what that really says is always change your default passwords, remove or disable unnecessary default accounts before installing something and really make sure that you're getting rid of any admin root or any other user accounts with elevated privileges and don't use the default password. Pretty simple. Um, see, so section four, uh, encrypt transmission of cardholder data across open public networks. What this means is use industry recognized cryptography and security protocols um, anytime you're transmitting the data. So use encryption in transit and do it with some sort of method that is widely recognized or used, for instance, TLS 1.2. Uh, number 10, track and monitor all accesses to network resources and cardholder data. Again, a little bit more simplistic, 
enable audit logging. Um, so enable your audit logs and make sure that your audit logs are tracking any failed access to cardholder data, any access to data with root or admin privileges, uh, invalid login attempts, and more importantly, any access to those audit trails. Um, so that's on the data security side. And we go a little bit more granular on the software security side, uh, looking at some of the same ones. So for instance, um, objective two, secure default, it's very similar to requirement two in data security, which is turn off all features or accounts that don't need to be done, right? Turn off, um, you know, turn off and change all passwords for anything, you know, any accounts that don't need to be used. Turn on all security controls and security features that you have within the software by default. Uh, and then, you know, change your default passwords. Again, seems pretty simple, but so often these are the base reasons, you know, the, the most common reasons for a breach. Um, so you take objective three, six, and seven all in tangent. So sensitive data retention, sensitive data protection, use of cryptography. Basically what that says is use an industry recognized uh, or approved cryptographic algorithm or other method to uh, encrypt, you know, encrypt data in transit and encrypt data at rest. And again, we'll talk to a little bit more of that later. Uh, so encryption in transit, encrypt at rest, uh, change your passwords, control objective number eight, which is activity tracking. Again, we go back to audit logging. So, you know, make sure that the access to and use of data is logged with sufficient details so that you can go back and identify any potential issues or any potential attacks. And then make sure those logs are protected, right? Don't let anyone access the logs. Make sure the logs are, uh, you know, limited to any sort of uh, manipulation and, you know, back them up. Um, so again, you know, really PCI scares people. Um, it really is though uh, much easier to attain PCI DSS compliance by just knowing and understanding the requirements of, of the data security standards, the security software frameworks, and how they apply to your environment, what applies to your environment, and then just going through and making sure that your software and your applications are configured correctly. And uh, I think at that point, Brian is probably the best person to talk through that because if I do so, it's not gonna go well for anyone. Thanks, Brian, Travis. anything to add? <laughs> Thanks, Travis. Uh, as uh... Interesting as the PCI stuff uh, from a legal perspective is, I think I picked up three main points from that. Uh, one, the DSS stuff is like the data side, or sorry, the, the DDS stuff is the data side, the DSS stuff is the total software system side. But then also in order for an organization to call themselves PCI compliant, they got to do things on there like check the boxes for locking the doors and uh, installing firewalls. And there's a lot in there that was environmentally related as well as just, you know, whether or not the database is, uh, is PCI compliant. So um, there's a much broader scope than, uh, than it appears to which, just a first which, glance. Which, yeah, it's a good call out, Brian, because anything that, I mean, if anyone has gone through a information security audit, you know, whether it's ISO 27001, uh, a HIPAA audit, a SOC 2 audit, right? Like these, these aren't new, these aren't new standards. They may be a little bit more granular within PCI, uh, both within DSS and FFF, but these are all very similar in the way that they're structured and you know, their application to a, a company's operations and technical controls. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great call. So it's, you know, it's a little bit of product and capabilities of product and a lot of configuration that go into PCI compliance. Uh, this is, you know, MongoDB Inc's, uh, their own words. This is an excerpt directly from their website on the features that are available in their um, Atlas implementation uh, that um, may help towards, you know, PCI DSS compliance uh, with the Atlas platform. So with, P with Percona Server for MongoDB, the question, you know, becomes, you know, how do we get to yes? And how do we, you know, check those boxes as yes, as you mentioned. So, and for the rest of the session, I'm gonna actually focus in on three specific areas uh, of feature configuration that can help um, get us to the point to where we can check that box yes for our organization. These three areas that we're gonna talk about are encryption of data at rest or on disk, Encryption of data in transit, what you mentioned with TLS, uh, and then enabling audit logging. Uh, again, I want to specify that, you know, this is just a limited subset of features that can be turned on in order to contribute to checking the yes boxes 
for that whole list of uh, of DSS and, and DDS um, compliance uh, uh, specific specifications. So let's go ahead and jump right in and start talking about uh, data at rest encryption or on disk. Uh, data at rest encryption is something that has been included with Percona server for MongoDB or PSMDB uh, since version 3.6. It is um, comparable with the data at rest encryption in the upstream MongoDB Enterprise Edition. Uh, it uses envelope encryption. And what an envelope encryption model basically means is that um, you use one key to encrypt multiple other keys that are you know, in the so-called envelope. Uh, each of the databases that are running under the control of a running instance of MongoDB will be encrypted with a separate key, and then they're stored in a local internal key store, which is internal to that server itself. Uh, they're only written to disk in their encrypted format, which is then decrypted with the master key. Um, the internal keys never leave the specific Mongo server, uh, so they have isolation in that way. And the internal key store uh, for the database keys, again, is, is encrypted with that, uh, with that master key. Uh, the master key is external to the server, and it requires its own key management. And the key management can be a locally stored key. Uh, PSMDB or Percona server for MongoDB currently supports two methods of, of key management. One is the local file key store. The other is an external uh, key vault store called, we currently support HashiCorp key vault. Uh, there are other forms of HSMs out there that may be supported with the one, the one that we uh, actually test with and have certified with is HashiCorp's vault project uh, product. One thing that's important to note is that uh, uh, Percona server for MongoDB's encryption is not tied to replication in any way, shape, or form. So the master key is never going to be communicated from one replica node to another replica node. The data that is actually transmitted via the replication is not encrypted with these keys. It is, you know, it does get encrypted in transit, but it has nothing to do with this data in REST encryption. So based upon that, each and every node has its own encryption uh, 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 mechanisms and could be encrypted or might not be encrypted and it's not, they're not dependent on one another for their encryption. Um, there are two ciphers that are supported for uh, encryption with Percona Server for MongoDB. Uh, other, other considerations to note is that existing data cannot be encrypted in place. So if you want to enable encryption, uh, you won't be able to just turn on encryption for an existing database. However, that being said, uh, MongoDB has a very robust replica set architecture with a lot of built-in automation that uh, makes it very easy uh, to do things like rolling upgrades or the conversion of encrypted database. Uh, essentially, the only thing you would need to do is set up a new MongoDB server, turn encryption on from default, and then add that replica set node into the replica set. And as the native sync process is loading data over to it, that data will become encrypted on that server. Uh, enabling encryption at rest. And again, this is the simplest configuration. So don't just do this and say, hey, I'm good to go. Um, actually put more thought into it. But the first thing that you need to do is generate a key file. If you're using a locally stored key, generate a key file, set the permissions of the key file, set the ownership privileges for that key file, and then modify the configuration by simply uncommenting out the security section, setting enable encryption for true, pick your encryption cipher and point to your key file. And that is enough to turn on encryption at rest. Now, again, you don't want to just stop there. There's a lot more thought and energy that you want to put into this. Highly recommend utilizing an external key store such as uh, HashiCorp's Vault product. But just for a bare minimum, to get data at rest encrypted, this will do it. Yeah. So with that, let's move on to enabling encryption in transit or TLS uh, 1.2. Uh, prior to uh, 4.2, Percona server for MongoDB utilized SSL. Uh, we followed the upstream model from MongoDB. After 4.2, we utilized TLS. 
And again, this is a minimum configuration. There are a lot more things that you would want to do here, but just to get it turned on, the only thing that you need to do is specify TLS or SSL on the, the server side in the configuration file. Then on the client side, inside of the URL, you would simply tag the TLS or SSL equals true, depending upon which, which, uh, which version of the, the you're accessing. Um, but again, this is the simplest configuration and there's a lot more things to consider like certificates and expirations and lots of other things. So uh, don't just set these and then you know try and run with it. Uh, get some good advice on setting up TLS uh, according to best practices. And you know the important thing to remember uh, is that this is about configuration. So get the configuration correctly. Uh, it's the configuration that gets you to compliance. It's not the software out of the box. So, uh, you know, this minimum set of, uh, of settings shows you that the configuration is there. There's a lot more configuration options there available to you. So, um, you know, do your due diligence. Uh, and if you need to reach out to somebody to really get an in-depth understanding of how to set the configuration in a much more robust way, then, then definitely reach out for that additional expertise. On the topic of audit logging, uh, audit logging allows administrators to track and log users' activities on a Percona server for MongoDB uh, server. And you know, when you have audit logging enabled, the server will generate an audit log and the log contains um, information about user events such as authentication, authorization failures, uh, and so on. So uh, to enable audit logging, where we have specific events, what we do is specify the log file format. Uh, sorry, we specify the destination, we specify the log file format, and then we uh, specify the path to it and a filter if we actually want to put in a filter. Destination can be either console, file, or uh, assist the syslog mechanisms. The format of the log can either be in JSON or BSON. And this, what you see here is an example of what the log message looks like. We have an A type value, then we have the timestamp, we have the IP address, we have the user that did it, we have what roles they were associated with, we have the, the parameter, which is the actual uh, part of the data payload, and then the result is um, it'll be an indicator of whether or not that was a log of a successful event or a failed event. Our filter, if we so choose to put a filter onto it, can either use standard query selectors, such as um, equals, in, greater than, less than. Uh, so in this example here, we're filtering on the type value being in this set of values. And this set of values includes things like authentication events, authorization checks. We have things in there like update a role or drop a user or uh, you know remove a shard or shut down a database. These are all events that uh, based upon this filter, will get captured in log. We can also use regular expressions. So in the example at the bottom here, we have, we're using a regular expression instead of you know, these specific auth event types. So in this regular expression, we're basically saying, I want to log anything that starts with the word drop. And so everything that you see in the list above there that has the word drop in it would automatically get logged based upon that regular expression. So. And that's it. Cool. Well, I mean, I'm not technical in the slightest, Brian, but that seems like it's pretty <laughs> simple, right? Um, I mean, you know, these are three of the things that are some of the most common causes of breaches. Um, these are things that can just lead to PCI DSS and PCI SSS compliance, right, in pretty straightforward fashion. So, you know, encryption at rest, encryption at transit, audit logging, uh, you know, whether or not you need to maintain a PCI compliant environment or whether you're pushing for, you know, PCI DSS or PCI, you know, SSS compliance. Uh, it seems like these things are just something that you should be doing when you're configuring Percona server for MongoDB and really any database if it supports it from the get-go. So, and I think so what I've seen probably the most critical of which is using strong authentication processes and, you know, really industry recognized cryptography, right? Uh, upgrade to TLS 1.2, right? Uh, implement password requirements, get rid of the default passwords, get rid of the admin, uh, you know, accounts that just used admin as a password. 
you know, use 20 plus characters for your passwords. Uh, and then unfortunately, breaches are just part of everyday life now, right? Uh, we haven't heard about as many of them lately in the last, you know, six or seven months because the news has been, you know, elsewhere. But, you know, breaches are still occurring on a daily basis. You know, when they occur, we also need to know who accessed what, when, and where it went, uh, if it went anywhere for the purpose of, you know, our public disclosures and for uh, forensics. So make sure you have auto logging turned on. Make sure you are sufficiently collecting that data and, you know, storing it somewhere. Make sure you have access to it and can easily get to it and search through it. Brian, anything else on wrap up? Yeah, thanks, Travis. Um, you know, I think the, the main things that I got out of this is that uh, what you need for PCI compliance is a well-architected, implemented environment. You need software that is configurable to allow you to make the right choices. And then you need to actually make those choices and make that, that environment configuration in such a way that it actually meets all of those requirements and checks all of those yes boxes. It really is that PCI is more about what you do than it is what you have in terms of software. You know, there's some base functionality that the software has to have, but if you don't turn it on, then you're not PCI compliant, even if the software has the capability. So, you know, again, as I said before, please reach out to Kona if you've seen anything here that you have questions on, that you need help, that you'd like a deeper dive on. Don't go with the defaults of what we just showed you because it is way too simplistic. You know, um, our goal is your successful implementation. And, uh, you know, with that, um, here's some, some of the resources that are uh, some backup links from the information that we covered in this uh, session documentation, both from Percona's uh, website, and then also some documentation directly from the pin card industry standards website as well. And uh, with that, thank you everybody for uh, joining us today and listening to us rattle on about this. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Brian. Yep. All right, guys. Uh, if there's no further questions, then have a great day. And uh, if you do have questions, you can submit them in, uh, in the Q&A and we can get them back to you uh, as, as quickly as possible.